Hello, today we are going to talk about the bones of the upper limb. Upper limb. There are three sections in it. The proximal section, shoulder, in which the humerus is located. The middle section, forearm, is distinguished into the radius and the ulna. And finally, the distal section, hand. It is represented by the bones of the hand. There is also a clavicle and a shoulder blade, which belong to the shoulder girdle or the girdle of superior extremity. The skeleton of the upper limb, as we have already said, is represented by the bones of the shoulder girdle and the bones of the arm. The bones of the shoulder girdle. Here we can see the clavicles and the shoulder blade. On the right is a top view and on the left is a rear view. Shoulder blade is a flat bone, triangular in shape. It is located behind the lateral side of the chest, at the level of the second to the seventh ribs. The shoulder blade has two surfaces, three angles and three edges. On this slide we observe the dorsal surface of the shoulder blade. We can see the lateral edge, marga lateralis, which is located on the side of cavitas glenoidalis, and the medial edge faces the spine. There are the lower angle, the upper angle, the lateral angle, in which the articular cavity of cavitas glenoidalis is located, which is slightly concave and participates in the formation of the shoulder joint. There are Incisura scapula, the coracoid, processus coracoidus. It hangs over cavitus glenoidalis. Acromion. There is also a spine of the scapula, spina scapula. This is a protrusion from the upper part of facies posterior that divides the shoulder blade into the fossa infraspinata and the fossa supraspinata. We can also see the subarticular tubercle. Costal surface. Here we have the same medial edge, lateral edge, lower angle, upper edge and upper angle, articular surface, tuberculum supraglenoidalis and tuberculum infraglenoidalis, which is located below cavitas glenoidalis, and the acromion or acromial process. It is an extension of the spina scapula. The process hangs over cavitus glenoidalis. Clavicle. Clavicula. It is an S-shaped curved long tubular bone. It consists of the body, sternal and acromial extremities. The clavicle holds the shoulder joint at some distance from the chest. Here is the acromial extremity of the clavicle and the sternal extremity of the clavicle. Humerus consists of a body and two epiphyses, upper or proximal epiphyses and lower or distal epiphyses. The body or diaphysis and then the proximal and distal epiphyses are shown. The head of the humerus has tuberculum myos, which lies laterally. It has upper, middle and lower sides for muscle attachment. It has the crest of the greatest tubercle, Christa tuberculum majoris which goes down from the greater tubercle. The minor tubercle, tuberculum minus, is located medially. The crest of the minor tubercle, Christa tuberculum minoris, goes down from the tubercle of the same name. The anatomical neck, Colum anatomicum, surrounds the articular surface of the head. Also there is a bicipital groove, Sulcus intratubercularis, which separates the tubercles and their crests. Here attach the tendons of the long head of the biceps. On the distal epiphysis, epicondylus medialis is located. It is larger than the lateral one and is located on the side of the head of the humerus. Epicondylus lateralis. The head and the block, which lies medially, serve to articulate with the ulna. Fossa coronaida is located in front of the block. 
When bending in the elbow joint, the coronoid process of the ulnar bone enter it. There is also an ulnar process fossa and the groove of the ulnar nerve on the dorsal side of the bone. On the aphysis we can see the groove of radial nerve. Radius. In the forearm it is located laterally, on the side of the thumb. It consists of a body or diaphysis and two epiphyses. On the proximal epiphysis there is the head of the radial bone, caput radii. On the distal epiphysis there is the styloid process, processus styloidus. The tuberosity of the radial bone is located on the front surface under the column radii. The biceps muscle of the shoulder is attached to it. Also there is an articular surface on the distal epiphysis. Ulna. In the forearm it is located medially on the side of the little finger. It consists of a body or diaphysis and two epiphyses. On the proximal epiphysis there is a block-shaped incision, incisura trochlearis, which serves to articulate with trochlear humeri. An ulnar process or alecranon. It limits the incisura trochlearis above. The coronate processus, processus coronaeidus. It limits the incisura trochlearis below. Here we also observe the tuberosity of the ulna. On the distal epiphysis there is a head, caput ulna, styloid process, processus styloidus, which departs from the medial edge of the head. The bones of the hand, ossa manus, they are divided into the bones of carpus, bones of the metacarpus, and the bones or the fingers of the hand, the phalanx of the fingers, phalanges digitorum manus. So, let's analyze the bones of the carpus. Scaphoid bone, or scaphoidum, it is the largest of the first row of bones. The lunate bone, or lunatum, it has the appearance of a crescent moon. Together with the scaphoid bone, it covers the head of the capitate bone. The trihedral bone, or striquatum, has shape of an irregular pyramid, P-shaped bone, or spisiformis. These were all bones of the proximal row, now the distal row. Trapezium bone, or trapezium, has a large saddle surface. Trapezoid bone, or trapezoidum. Capitate bone, or capitatum. Hooked bone, or schema. Metacarpal bones include five short tubular bones in each of which distinguish the base, basis, body, corpus, and head, caput. Finger bones. They are short and include five fingers. Each finger except the first has three phalanx, proximal, distal, and middle. The thumb has only two proximal and distal. This video was made by students Tritikova Julia and Pankov Stanislav, General Medicine 224. Thanks for your attention. Goodbye.